You once again tuned in to the most shadow bad man in the land, LA. I'm back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to share um, an article from the uh, newsletter, the now already defunct month monthly newsletter from Upside Up News. But again, I'm going to shoot for a uh, bi, uh, I guess you could say, um, biannual uh, news uh, magazine. In hopes that um, I could raise funds to further this uh, channel and this endeavor. But if not, once again, I'll be doing it for free because uh, it's what I like to do anyway. It would be nice to uh, be able to do it better and to be um, um, monetarily rewarded for my efforts. But um, let's get right into it. And uh, once again, uh, thanks for watching. This is um, in the unsavory individual section. Because we talk a lot about members of the tribe a lot on this channel and, and how they're destroying the world. But uh, what, what I'm going to do in the, in the future is talk more about the their technocrats and the uh, non-tribesmen who actually participate in the downfall of humanity. Here we go. This is Max Boot, New World Order Technocrat by Professor Ayatollah Lamar Aismo. Anyway, let's do this. Ever since the group's founding in 1921, the Council on Foreign Relations, CFR, has been instrumental in steering U.S. foreign policy as well as the media towards whichever direction the global elite see fit. The CFR was founded by such prominent internationalists as Paul, War Paul Warburg, Walter Lippmann, and David Rockefeller, among others. The CFR's goals is nothing less than global one-world government in which there is only two kinds of people. Lords and serfs. Initially, the CFR flew under the radar like other secretive elitist think tanks and cabals. The media did nothing to uncover the truth about these organizations and its nefarious plot. The CFR does nothing to try to hide their intent to create a new world order. In fact, they have, been, they have a bi-monthly publication entitled Foreign Affairs. One of the many... Excellent technocrats, the Council on Foreign Relations has been, excuse me, Council on Foreign Relations has at their disposal is Max Boot, an American military historian and lecturer. Boot is a fixture in the CFR's arsenal of intellectuals who have prominent posts and in institutions throughout the country. Another more notable member, Carol Quigley, a former Georgetown professor who President Bill Clinton said had a profound influence on him, Quigley had the privilege of reviewing the CFR's archives of former meetings and other documents. In his book, Quigley said the goal of the council was to rule the world in a feudalistic fashion using the banks to dominate around the world. When one looks at the current conditions of the global economy and the world, it is not hard to see that the council's plan for a new world order is coming along nicely. The IMF, World Bank, and the Bank for International Settlements have more power than most or perhaps all of the leaders in the Western world. In the November slash December issue of Foreign Affairs entitled China's Imperialist President, Max Boot lays criticism of American foreign policy concerning its efforts in warfare and recent history. In his article, More Small Wars, Counterinsurgency is Here to Stay, Boot laments the fact that after all the blood and treasure lost in wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, Iraq is dominated by Sunni extremists, ISIS, and strong Shia forces backed by Iran. Instead of being upset with the outcome of the wars, Boot should be upset with the United States' involvement in the first place. Many of the founders of this country would not view the American empire favorably, especially Jefferson and Washington. Boot's concerns are illegitimate from a non-elitist slash globalist standpoint. Unless Boot was being disingenuous in this article, which the current author believes he was, he would be a fool. The intentions behind the war in Iraq was not to create a stable democracy in one of the Middle East's most oil-rich countries. It was designed to create controlled chaos. By controlled chaos, I mean the West, including Israel and some of the Gulf states, desire to create instability in countries that are not aligned with the West and their banking-slash-corporate masters' desire for one world. Excuse me, for desire 
for the for the um, yeah for a desire of one world. One primary example of this hypocritical response to the so-called Arab Spring, Bahrain and Syria. The former is ruled by a brutal royal family who are firmly in the back pocket of the West, while the latter is ruled by uh, President Assad, who is described as a dictator by his detractors. Be that as it may, Assad was the only independent government left in the Levant. The brutal murder of Muammar Gaddafi, Libya, another independent country with corresponding uh, reinstallation of a military junta or junta in Egypt, is another prime example. An interesting side note that can be added is the fact that the West seems to support brutal oppression of the Shia. They tend to favor Sunni and Wahhabi dictatorships in the region. Boot goes on to describe uh, the United States' post-war blunders in its history. The Haitian and Filipino insurrection along with the Barbary pirates, uh, Serbian death squad, Somali warlords, and Vietnamese were all mentioned, or excuse me, were all mentioned and all of the aforementioned conflicts, perhaps maybe two, were legitimate uses of force, unless one is a believer in imperialism. Finally, Boot gives suggestions for future success in imperial adventures and says something very curious. Generating order out of chaos is one of the hardest tasks any country can attempt, and it requires considerable preparation of the kind that the United States military undertook for the occupation of Germany and Japan after 1945, but seldom did before and has seldom done since. Boot also goes on to make the case that it is foolish to believe that the United States can go back to isolationism as a policy, considering all the conflicts around the world and our, I have been in quotes, allies. However, he neglected to mention the fact that the vast majority of the conflicts that place that take place around the world are usually due to Western intervention at some level. The government will continue to play whack-a-mole with terrorists while the average American's prospects for the future education and standard living goes into oblivion and we are made into serfs that the CFR wishes us to be in what Quigley mentioned with approval, a world ruled in a feudalistic Feudalistic fashion by the banks. No thanks to the CFR and Mr. Quigley. They can fantasize about ruling the world at uh, the vast majority's expense, but as long as there are people who are not led by their propaganda and the mainstream media, um, excuse me, but as long as there are people who are not led by their propaganda and the mainstream media, there will be those who oppose their new world order. So that was one of my articles from... Um, the um, and as you can see, it's a uh, very hot here in the Mikhail Bakunin uh, Freedom <laughs> Freedom Fighter Studios. That's what I think I was just I'll call my um my sunroom slash uh, office deal I got going here. But that's it for now. That's one of the many articles that you could have had um, had there been any sort of response. I was expecting people to take me up on my free offer, and um in, in hopes that they would get the magazine. Because my plan was to, to have a physical copy with more content and to have the digital copy with less content. That way, um, people can't just disseminate my hard work because it takes effort to actually um, write and to do the research necessary to, um, to source it properly. Because I have the... Um, um, the sources and the material at, at, at an expense to myself. It's not free. But in addition to that, this stuff is already in my, my head. And, um, you know, but the thing is, I like to use sources and to um, refer to them because people can't pull that, oh, you just made it up or this is your opinion. No, I, I, I give you the facts and then I, I base my interpret interpretation around that. So, um, unlike the mainstream media who just, they spout off lies, they don't, they don't really cite it. And, and when they do, it's, it's from some, um, dubious source, uh, some either a corporate or, um, some sort of Western Intel source that is obviously biased in favor of the new world order. Me, I'm, I'm a one man, uh, one man wrecking crew here. Uh, I have to read in, in addition to doing my real job, I have to actually read and consume this stuff and 
in order to, to give you this information. But if you can, please support me uh, by uh, sending a donation to the PayPal link. Anything is acceptable. I'm grateful for anything. Um, I had a good response from Sweden last time, and I'm, and I'm hoping that um, that continues. So thanks to Sweden, because apparently my countrymen, uh, you know, I don't know whether it's because uh, people are in bad shape or just the, the sheer um, minute size of this channel, but I don't get me, you know, any support from uh, my brethren here in the United States. But again, that doesn't mean I'm going to quit, but thanks to all who do donate. And um, if you can, uh, donation, anything is good. But if you can't donate, uh, tell a friend who's going to tell a friend about Lamar Aismo. Thanks for watching. God willing, I'll see you in a future video.